You know why you're here. I know why you're here. So let's start cooking. Hey y'all, I'm Mandy and this is Mandy in the making. This particular night, this particular recipe is one that I'm very excited about and Stephen, Stephen got really excited. He had a little hesitation at first and then I showed him the ingredients and he said, let's do it. I think my very favorite pasta is orzo and tonight we are having Cajun chicken orzo. To get started, I'm gonna heat this to about medium high. You want a really large pan, ideally one that has a lid. While it is heating, I'm gonna throw in about a half a tablespoon of butter and about a tablespoon of olive oil. I'll tell you a little more about it later, but Thrive Market is kindly sponsoring today's video. They are a great way to save on your favorite organic brands. And today I'm gonna have a link for you that is gonna save you 30% on your first order, plus you're gonna get a free gift worth up to $60. Okay, we just have a couple of things to do. We need to finely mince or dice this onion. It's about a half an onion, but it was a rather large one. We just need a couple of tablespoons of sun-dried tomatoes. I'm gonna chop them super duper fine because I'm not a big fan of the texture. I know they make a paste and I thought I bought some sun-dried tomato paste. I found it at Aldi. Cannot find it for the life of me. So I'm gonna make kind of my own paste right now because I want this chopped up as finely as possible. That's all the chopping and dicing I need to do. Now we need to season our chicken. So the recipe called for three chicken breasts sliced into small strips. I did two because I had really large chicken breasts. I've got some Tony Chatteries, Catcheries. I don't, I don't know how to say it. Creole seasoning, Cajun seasoning. Kind of toss it around, flip it over so I can get to the underside. And I'm just gonna eyeball this. We like spicy, so I don't mind if I kind of over season. And then it also says to add just a little bit of salt, so we'll do that too. I think there's salt in this, is there not? Yes, the first ingredient. And that's all we're gonna add then. Let's go over to the stove top and I can always season it after I put it in the pan as well. I'm gonna add a little more of this Creole seasoning to the top here. We're gonna flip it here in just a second. Cameraman has entered the kitchen. Thank you. <laughs> we don't have to worry about this cooking all the way through right this moment because it's gonna cook for quite a while. We're just getting it kind of browned or seared on each side. Going in with our chicken is our onion, some garlic, a tablespoon of tomato paste, and our sun-dried tomatoes. Gosh, that smells good already. Mm -hmm. We're gonna turn it to about low heat and let this cook for another five minutes. It's just gonna soften those onions. Our onions are good and soft. I've got one cup of orzo pasta here. I'm gonna pour this in. And we're gonna let this cook for about a minute before we add our liquid. All right, so it's been about a minute. I've got a cup of chicken broth. We're gonna add that in. And we wanna bring this up to a simmer. What'd you say? I said, I'm gonna burn you. <laughs> That's not what I meant. Right. He said, what if we threw some jalapeno in there? I said, well, we got one in the fridge, so here we are. Oh, it's coming up to a simmer over there. I gotta go oh, over there and do my thing. You better hurry up over there. Hurry. Oh. Don't cut yourself. Okay, I'll be back. So he's bringing our jalapeno over because this has come to a simmer. I'm gonna go ahead and turn it down just a bit. Go ahead. Oh, he is not playing. You better wash your hands good and don't touch your eyes. We are gonna let this simmer. I'm gonna put the lid on it. We'll stir it every so often, but simmer for about 20 minutes. It's gonna cook that orzo and it'll cook those jalapenos down too. I'm gonna do 19, cause we waited an extra minute or so before we turned it down. As the main person who does the shopping, the grocery shopping for our family, I've really become aware of what's on labels and ingredients that are in our foods that we're buying. So that has prompted me to move to a lot of organic products over the years. And the best place for me to find organic products at the best price is Thrive Market. Thrive Market is a membership-based online grocery store on a mission to make healthy living easy and affordable for everyone. Whether it's food products, cleaning products, personal care products, you name it, they've got it. All of the products are online. You can shop in your PJs, on your couch for the best selling organic foods and natural products at below retail prices. And good news, if you find a better price elsewhere, they will match it. I save so much money in every single order. In this order alone, I saved over $40. So I mentioned it's membership based. You can just do a membership month to month and that's $12 a month or you can do like we do and have the annual membership. It's billed annually at $59.95, which comes out to just five bucks a month. I mentioned that I saved over $40 in this order alone 
but if at the end of the year you have not saved the annual membership fee of $60, they will credit you the difference. So my good friend Jessica O'Donohue told me about these chips, the Siete brand. Kettle chips are my favorite. These are delicious. They're the perfect saltiness with that vinegar. They're really good. So if you're searching for particular products, maybe you eat gluten-free, you can filter for those products on their website. So you just choose that filter and it will show you all of the products that fit that lifestyle. And one great thing to remember, once you get your cart online up to $49, that order is gonna ship free. So go check out Thrive Market. Just go to thrivemarket.com slash Mandy in the making. And when you become a member today, you're gonna save 30% on your first order. Plus you're gonna get a free gift worth up to $60. As this is cooking for 20 minutes, you wanna make sure you're checking on the liquid sitch. So you don't want it to dry out. I did add probably another half a cup of chicken broth about mm, seven or eight minutes ago because my orzo was soaking it up and it was about to be dry and the orzo wasn't cooked yet. So just keep an eye on that. You may have to add more liquid. Let's check on, let's check the chicken. <laughs> chicken check. It is looking really good. We're gonna add in some baby spinach. I removed the stems. You don't have to do that. I do that because I don't like them. You need about a cup. You don't need a whole lot. We're gonna let that wilt. Actually, I'm gonna put the lid back on it for just a second. That'll help the wilting process speed up. What is it? You gotta wilt it down. <laughs> Y'all miss. We are wilting it down. Y'all miss so much when the camera is turned off. I, I'm sorry for y'all because it's it's pretty comical in this uh, kitchen. All right, here. Now, <clears throat> we're gonna put some uh, that's right, we're putting some heavy cream in there. That's right, only about a fourth a cup, not a lot. We don't put no more than a quarter. Whoa, now, whoa, I'm just kidding. Would you stop? <laughs> God, <laughs> I can't do nothing with you. <laughs> All right, let's stir that around. We're gonna let that heat through, and then I've got some grated Parmesan cheese. Yes, ma'am. Mm. Let's add that in. You're gonna add in about three tablespoons. I grated a little extra so we could put some on top. I like you. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> That is really good. Definitely getting the Creole spices and flavors in there. Good. Garlic flavor. I mean, it is not bland. No. It's hitting hardcore. Okay, good. Oh, yeah. Oh, Cole, Cole is in the other room and he just said, oh, yeah. That is super flavorful. The word bland is nowhere in this house right now. <laughs> Salad with the um, Caesar dressing. Is that Caesar? It's pesto Caesar, yes. Man, what a combination of flavors. Yeah. So the good. Creole seasoning is very rich mm -hmm. in that Creole flavor for mm -hmm. sure. The chicken mm -hmm. just melts. The chicken is, it is so fantastic. good. It is not dried out at all. So good kick of spice from the chili pepper right. that's in there. Yeah. I don't feel like the chili pepper adds a lot of flavor to this, no. if you know what I mean? Like it doesn't take away. No. Or, it just add a little more heat. Just add a little bit more heat. Mm -hmm. Which yes. we like. Y'all gotta make this one. You got this. Who's got this? All of them. I have faith in you. Wait, you gotta say it the Southern way. It's not all of them. What is it? All y'all. All y'all. <laughs> okay, now that we've had our motivation from Cole, we're gonna move on to our second and third recipe that are all kind of rolled into one. Rolled. I'm making meatballs. I gotta roll them. We're making meatballs and gravy today. I love meatballs and gravy, and then I love mashed potatoes. And we're gonna make our mashed potatoes a little bit differently today. A subby sent in the secret recipe that her grandmother used and that she always uses, so we'll do that too. But first, let's roll up some meatballs. There is no cheese. There's not. I'm not lying to you. I'm not. There's no cheese. I know. It's awful. I know. Let's get started. First of all, we need a pound and a half of ground beef. You don't want it too lean. I believe this is 85.15. I've got half of a yellow onion that I finely diced. We're gonna add that in. We need a fourth a cup of breadcrumbs. I've got Italian style. Two cloves of garlic, minced. One large egg. We need a tablespoon of ketchup. A teaspoon of mustard. A teaspoon of the dub sauce. If you wonder what I'm saying, I'm not saying dove like a bird. I'm saying dub, short for W. About a half a teaspoon of salt and about a quarter teaspoon of pepper. And then if you have fresh parsley, throw some of that in there. You know what, I've got dried parsley. We'll go with just a little bit of that. Where are you, parsley? 
So I think it calls for like a couple of teaspoons of fresh. So that's just a little tiny bit of dried. We'll throw that in there. And I think that's already in the Italian style too, the breadcrumbs, right? Yep, parsley is in there. So we just added a little extra. Okay, I'm gonna use my oversized gloves for this. <laughs> this is always a good time right here. Okay, let me get a plate because the secret to this apparently is after you roll them, put them in the fridge for about 15 minutes. And that way they won't break apart when they're cooking. So when we put them in the fridge, then I will peel my potatoes and get that going. This is what always happens. They're just dangling. Now to roll these up, I am going to just use my bare hands. These are gonna be one, about one and a half inches in diameter and I think we're supposed to get 24 to 27 of them. Wish me luck. I got 28 out of that. They look pretty good. These are gonna go in the fridge for about 15 minutes. Before I peel my potatoes, I do need to slice up this onion. This is gonna go in the gravy. So I'm just gonna do these in about half inch rings and then I'll separate them out and maybe slice the rings in half. Ooh, that thing is potent. Mm-hmm. As she backs away. Oh gosh. Potent. Potent. Uh-huh. Potent. Okay. Whoa. Let's let's step away from the situation. How about it? Whew. I'm gonna start peeling these potatoes for our um mashed potatoes to go with our dinner, our meatballs and gravy. However, I'm gonna tell you just a little bit about someone who told me how to make my potatoes even better. So today our subby supper comes from Joanne. Joanne submitted this on our subby supper form. I always have that linked down in the description box. So if you have a recipe that you wanna share, do it there. But Joanne said to make my mashed potatoes as usual, but her grandmother added a secret ingredient that made it even better. The secret ingredient? I feel like I've heard from some of y'all in the comments before telling me to do this. I've just never tried it. And I was looking for a side dish subby supper to go with today's dinner. And I saw this and I thought, well, that's just perfect. We're gonna finally give this a try. So I'm gonna make my potatoes like normal, but in the end, as I'm mixing it all up, I'm gonna add in, how much does she say? Just says put Duke's mayo. So until you, until feel, I can talk, until it feels right, as my Nana Elizabeth would say. So thank you, Joanne, for submitting that because I would have forgotten completely to try this. Every time I see it in a comment, I'm like, I need to do that, and then I forget. So the fact that she submitted it online and I was able to print it out, reminded me. So I'm back to peeling. I am making extra mashed potatoes today because I think we're gonna have some meatballs left over. I could be wrong. You never know. But in case we do, we'll want to eat those meatballs with some extra mashed potatoes. So once I get these chopped up and put some water on them and get them going on the stove, I am then going to get started on our meatballs on the stove top. Okay, so I've got these going over here on the stove and we are going to heat this to about medium heat. I just turned it on and we're going to add about three tablespoons of olive oil. We're going to do these in batches because you want to leave enough room in here to roll them over so you can kind of brown them on both sides or all sides. And we're not gonna cook them all the way through. They'll finish cooking here in a little bit in the gravy, but we just want to brown them. <laughs> I cannot get that one to turn. There we go. It's been a couple of minutes on each side. So I'm gonna remove these to a plate and just repeat this process until all of them have browned. Okay, I just removed the last of them. So I'm gonna throw in a tablespoon of unsalted butter. We're gonna let that melt and then we're gonna kind of work on caramelizing our onions. I did turn the heat down to a little under medium and we're just gonna let these cook for about 10 to 15 minutes to really soften them up. They'll be perfect in the gravy and I'm gonna stir them pretty often. These have been going for about 10 minutes. They are nice and soft and pretty much caramelized. So let's move on. I've got a cup of this chicken broth we're gonna add in. We also need to add in a cup of beef broth. 
If you have beef bouillon cubes, you can use that, or you can use a teaspoon of the better than bouillon, which is what I'm gonna do. And then we're gonna add in about a half a teaspoon of garlic powder and about a teaspoon of onion powder. And lastly, about a teaspoon and a half of the dub sauce. That is literally the last little drops I had in there. I have another one in the pantry, but. That's it, folks. Now, if you have any kind of caramelized or um, brown bits on the bottom of your pan, this is the time to go through and kind of scrape that up. I've got about a quarter cup of water, cold water. I'm gonna add in three tablespoons of cornstarch, which is basically all I had left. I'm gonna stir that together. I'm gonna turn the heat back up on my skillet to about medium high. And while we wait on this to come to a bubble because it's not quite there yet, Let's go work on the mashed potatoes. Okay, I drained these already. Okay, let me grab some butter, some heavy cream. Oh, I hear it bubbling. Let's go back over to the stove. I was gonna steam some broccoli too and totally forgot, so that's not happening. We're gonna whisk in this cornstarch and that won't take long to thicken at all. I feel like that's a pretty good thickness, so let's reduce the heat to medium low and we're gonna put our meatballs back in here and let them continue to finish cooking if that will just drop off, please. Nope, okay, fine. I'm gonna nestle those down in there and then I'm gonna try and cover them up with the sauce and then it'll probably be about 10 minutes or so and it should be done. Now here's the not easy part. I'm trying to turn them over and get them kind of coated in the sauce without breaking them apart. And we're gonna let this hang out for another 10 minutes while we go finish the mashed potatoes. Do you always use your mixer? It just depends on whether I feel like dirtying something else. And I don't. I feel like this kitchen is messy enough. I don't wanna deal with it. And let me go grab my salt and pepper. A little garlic powder too. Finished mixing that. And then we're gonna throw in a dollop. Daisy, yeah. Well, actually I do normally put a little bit of sour cream in mine, but today is sour cream. I'm gonna do a dollop of Duke's. I love that. Dukes, it's got twang. It does. It is the best. She didn't tell me how much. So I'm pretty much gonna do kind of what I normally do with sour cream, which is about a quarter, quarter cup or so. I did pretty good without an electric mixer. I feel like these are super creamy. Let's go back over to the stove top and check on that. Look what I just found. It's the sun-dried tomato paste. It was in my um, spice cabinet. I was looking in my pantry. Well, at least I found it. <laughs> Our meatballs are almost done, but I wanna taste test these mashed potatoes before we go and pour gravy all over them because I need to see if I can tell a difference. Tink. The tiniest difference. It has a little bit of that twang to it. Okay, Joanne, you made me a believer. From now on, I'm not gonna add sour cream. I'm adding Duke's. Tiniest subtle difference. But if you love Duke's, it's a good difference. Are you situated now? I'm situated with okay. my Salisbury steak meatballs. Yeah, it is. That's what Cole said. It tastes like Salisbury steak. Well, let's get into this then. It looks good. And just so you know, there's Duke's mayo in the mashed potatoes. Okay. Can't it's go the, wrong with that. Well, it's the tiniest little change, but you're probably not going to taste it much because you've got the gravy. Mmm, really good. <laughs> Let me get another dose of these taters here. Okay. I mean, it's good. I know, it's hard for you to tell because you've got the gravy on it. You didn't yeah. get to taste it without, so that's that's all right. I'm gonna make them that way from now on, so. Yeah, ain't nothing wrong with putting little Dukes in there. Yeah, Dukes makes everything better. But yeah, the meatballs are really good. Good flavor, it is very reminiscent of Salisbury steak. Okay. Um, the, the texture of the meatball is very tender. Good. Juicy. Excellent. Um, it's really good. Yeah, it's a very tasty meal for okay. sure. Cole, one or two mm. thumbs? Uh -oh. Two, but I'd give you more. Oh. <laughs> I like that. I hope you enjoyed the recipes today. Let me know in the comments below which one you plan to add to your meal plan. And don't forget, if you haven't already, check out Thrive Market. Just go to thrivemarket.com slash Mandy in the making. You're gonna save 30% on your first order, plus you're gonna get a free gift worth up to 60 bucks. As always, we appreciate y'all being here and watching each week. Thanks y'all, see you next time. Bye.